podcast, which is my podcast on knitting and crocheting and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and also on my website newleafdesigns.nl where you can find all of my free and paid patterns and also on Ravelry and I will list all of the other things right here on the screen. I'm joined by my kitty Momo today. She is casually lounging on my FO, lying just out of shot right here. Um, I was going to show that, Momo. I'll just talk about something else first, I guess. Um, so my newest knit pattern is coming out September 1st, and they are the Madly in Love socks pattern. They're called Madly in Love because I think the color work looks like little hearts, super cute. And um, I have hand dyed this yarn with Matter Root, and I thought Matter Root, Madly in, in Love, uh, I don't know. I just thought it was a cute name. I knit these socks a while ago. The pattern has been available for some of my patrons. Uh, if you don't know, I'm on Patreon and you can support me on there and you can have awesome benefits such as exclusive tutorial videos. Uh, for my Willow and Elder patrons, uh, which is the $8 level and the $10 level, I have um, a free pattern. I have these as a free pattern and I filmed an exclusive tutorial series on that. It's like an hour and a half um, where I just take you step by step through this pattern and of course I have listed all of the steps so if you, you want to skip the cast on it's totally fine uh, you can just skip to the color work for example yes but um, these will be available for separate purchase on September 1st so keep an eye out for that so I have something very exciting to show you um, uh, some of you know we have a Breeze Blocks shawl crochet along going on and it is ending September 1st, also September 1st. So if you have finished your Breeze Blocks, be sure to um, place the finished objects photo in the finished objects thread in the Ravelry group. Um, Ravelry group is called New Leaf Podcast and as you may have guessed, I have finished my breeze blocks. So this is the, th the third breeze blocks shawl that I have made. Um, this one is in the Escape Peace Whirl Banana Cream High colorway. Here it comes. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! It's huge! And amazing! I love it. The kitty. The kitty also loves it. <laughs> hey! Oh, don't bite it, please. Okay, I will put in some pictures later because kitty is too excited. this with Escape Piece Whirl, which is the recommended uh, yarn for this 
pattern and it's a beautiful gradient yarn. You see this one it goes from light lilac-y purple to deeper purple to shocking blue and to yellow and then to creamy white. Kitty! <laughs> Kitty wants to attack my shawl. Um, uh, Scapies has been a very kind to donate a Scapies Whirl of choice to the winner of this crochet along. So really be sure to um, put your finished object pictures in the thread so you um, can be able to win. So you're able to win this amazing prize. Okay, Kitty has left the stage. Uh, so I am able to show you how to wear these because uh, a lot of people make the narrow version so they can wear it as a scarf but I usually tend to wear it as a shawl and I put just a little corner on my one shoulder and then I put the rest on my other shoulder and then again drape it around the first shoulder. <laughs> Um, so it kind of hangs as a triangular shawl. See? So it's, it's just really wearable in summer, uh, through autumn, just for the, um, somewhat chilly, um, evenings. And it's just it's just really wearable um i love the feel it's a cotton acrylic blend but it really just feels like a really soft cotton and um it's lace but it's not too dressy so you can just wear it over a t-shirt but you can also wear it over a dress because it does look very nice um and because of the yarn, you can just play with it because I can put the purple section up front or I can slide it to the other side. And I can put the yellow section in front. You can uh, use a shawl pin to keep it in place, but usually I just drape it and it stays put. In the pattern I've listed a bunch of ways how to wear this. I've added some pictures, so be sure to check that out um, if you're not sure how to wear this shawl. Thank you so much for all the enthusiasm in this crochet along and I'm super excited to start our new crochet along, which I will be talking about a little bit later in the episode. Alright, next up is a knitting project uh, that you may know from last time and I am I am so in love with it and I have made huge progress so last time you will have seen this awesome yoke so a yoke is um, the top part of a sweater a color work yoke sweater and it's a test knit for Olga Botano who is handmade closet on Instagram and I just love it I love it so much I have managed to finish not one but two sleeves since I last showed it to you the sleeves also have some color work, which is really nice. And I can't wait to block this because I think it will look so much better. Because the color work is a little bit tighter than the rest. So um, the third color is kind of bunched to together where it transitions into the color work. And I think blocking will just smoothen that out. Um, so I'm working on the body now and I had to uh, rip it back, well pretty much this part 
that I've re-knit this because it was getting too large. Um, but that will have nothing to do with a pattern. It's just that um, the yarn I have chosen needs some more air. It's, it's really... Um, yeah, I just needed to knit it on bigger needles in order for it to be a nice texture. Um, but still, these are smaller needles than the pattern says, but my stitches are bigger than um, the gauge in the pattern. And so I had to rip it back. And um, on my Patreon page, I have filmed a um, video on how I calculated what I uh, how much I needed to rip back and how how much I would have to decrease I'm not fulfilling anything of the pattern um, I just you know I um, I really want to explain to my patrons okay this is what I'm doing if my sweater whip is getting too big and how do you fix that because um, I'm I'm filming this whole Fix Your Knits series and I'm super excited about it because um, learning how to fix mistakes was what made me a confident knitter so so that's what I want to teach my patrons um, so I filmed a couple of tutorial videos and this is just a little extra um, to kind of give you an example of how to put what you've learned how to put that to work um, in your actual knitting. So yes, I have to. I had to rip it back and knit it, knit it again. Uh, so here's where I am. So it's pretty far. Um, I have put some stitch markers where I was. So yesterday, I haven't knit anything on this today. I've just been working. Um, so yesterday morning I started at this little progress keeper here so I did this much uh, and the day before I did this much and for projects that you know are just big stockinette tubes um, this is really motivating for the color work I didn't need it because it was so quick it's it just it basically in it itself um, <laughs> um, yes but I do like some cute pro progress keepers to keep me motivated for the body and this progress keeper I got from uh, Copo UK on Etsy this little kitty one and the cupcake tiny cupcake I got from Crafts by Cloud. And it's just super cute. The cupcake even has a little texture on it. It's just so cute. Um, so Crafts by Cloud is a Dutch shop. Um, I know the... Um, uh, the owner, she's so nice, and um, I know her from a couple of years ago when we attended a workshop together, and um, I've always been following her on Facebook. She makes such cute things. I'll I'll show you some uh, some other stitch markers of her later on, um, but yeah, I just I just love these, and uh, it's only in Dutch at the moment, so. Yeah, I think, but, but, you know, if you ask, maybe she will also ship to, um, to other countries. So, um, yeah, really cute. Um, so I'm loving this sweater and I actually think I will have it done and finished in a couple of days. Um, I'm just so excited to block this and to wear it. So, so excited. Um, yeah, so the pattern is schedule, scheduled to be published in September. It will be called the Occhiello sweater. No idea if that's correct. <laughs> uh, so by Olga Putano and be sure to keep an eye out. 
All right, for my second work in progress, which is also a knit sweater, let me show you what I'm working on. So I haven't made that much progress since last time, but that's mainly because this is a design and I really need to keep track of what I'm doing, which is why I can't just knit on it. I have to really keep track. And because I was working on the neckline, I had to basically write down every single row. Um, yeah, but I think I'm finished. Oh, this could be a nice cowl actually. <laughs> uh, but I think I'm finished with the front. Um, it's going to be, well, I actually aimed for it to be slightly cropped, but I think I've knitted too long, but Anyway, doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, I think I will put the stitches on stitch holders and then do the back. And when I'm finished, I can knit these together with a three needle bind off. But I am loving this. Take a look at that. I mean, usually, Usually I would like my projects to really look handmade, but this one, I mean, it could, it could be in a store, you know, this, this texture, this, this fabric, it is just, it feels modern and luxurious and I don't know. Yeah, so I'm really excited about this and um, if you're curious about the inspiration for this, have a, have a look at my last, at my previous um, podcast episode where I explain where the inspiration came from. Um, yeah, so I will continue knitting on this and I hope that I will be able to publish the pattern somewhere in October or November. Um, yeah, but we'll see. I'm just so excited about this because oh, it's just so lovely to knit. Oh, I should tell you what it is, right? So the yarn is Scapius Merino Soft Brush in the Van Dijk colorway, which is uh, number 256. Um, it's a lovely merino yarn. Uh, it's mixed in with some micro and some acrylic. Um, but I don't really, um, I don't really find it all that different from other merino. Um, you know, I'm talking about the acrylic content. I've never really had a merino yarn with acrylic content. So it was kind of putting me off in the first play, uh, when I first heard about it, but I I have to say that I don't really notice it. It just feels super soft, and actually acrylic um, keeps the yarn very sturdy. So yeah, um, really liking this yarn and. I'm knitting it together with Scapius, so the same brand, Scapius uh, Mohair Rhythm. And this is the Jitterbug colorway. And I think that's 768, not quite sure. Um, so Jitterbug. Uh, yes, and don't you just love these together? I mean, come on! I, I love how, you know, this is a bit too much. And this is a bit, well, a bit bland. I, I would look, it would really wash out my face. But this, amazing, amazing. I love mixing yarns. Um, and I'm knitting it on six millimeters. Yay. Um, yes, yeah, so more on that soon, I hope. I have been uh, crocheting some other bits and bobs, but uh, it's not really uh, enough yet to show you. So I'll just keep that until next time because I have a lot of other stuff to uh, show you. I have purchased 
some yarn from Stephen and Penelope in Amsterdam and I was so so pleased um so they um got in some La Bien Aimé yarn from France and I have been dying to get my hands on some La Bien Aimé um and I finally got juice canes and they're so so beautiful they're both um they're skinny singles um don't know if that's the base no they call it merino singles but anyway these are the yarns that i picked um this one is called romance so so pretty and this one is called dusk and oh, i just love it so much and i'm planning to use these two together in a shawl and I think they work really well together because um, some colors are the same. So there's some pink and purple and blue in both. But then this one has, well this one also has peach in it. But this one has, um, for example, gray and green. Just a little bit of green over there. Oh, it's so pretty, so pretty. And um, while I was shopping there, I also got a skein of Ching Fiber in her Melted Baby Suri. And this is the Narwhal colorway. And it's so pretty. I love this purple. It's amazing and um, I got to meet uh, Layla from Ching Fiber last year at the uh, Mystery Cow uh, launch event from um, Stephen West and it was just so fun to, to meet her and um, she was really shy uh, but I was really shy at the moment as well I am just uh, I was so starstruck um, <laughs> <laughs> that whole evening. Uh, I'm sure some of you can remember the um, podcast episode that followed that night. Um, yes, amazing. So I'm not sure if I will be using this together, but I thought it might be nice for some accents here and there in a shawl or in a sweater. Oh, and these are just my colors at the moment, green and purple, and I just, so, so pretty. And it's, it's not even that chunky, but yeah, so this is uh, 50 grams with 175 meters, so that is about sport weight, I think really excited about these and the customer service at Steven and Penelope is amazing I went and got these um, on a Friday evening they had just put on put um, put the update online and um, um, I had a question about my order so I messaged um, them on Instagram and I basically got an instant reply even though they had already closed up their shop for that evening their their physical shop i mean uh but she was still answering uh, my question so that was really really nice and um yes i really appreciate good customer service um right so that was the yarn that i bought and I was also really, really lucky to win some yarn in a giveaway on Instagram. Uh, and this was by Studio Maze. Oh, so pretty. So Studio Maze, with a Z on the end, is a Belgian indie dyer. Her name is Caroline. And... I'm not quite sure where she is based in Antwerp, in, uh, in Belgium, so I'm not sure if it's Antwerp or Ghent. Oh, it says it right here, 
made in Ghent. <laughs> okay, so Ghent, Belgium. And this is a sock set, uh, and it's called Storm. And I love how this yarn is dyed, and I've seen it knit up, and the white stripes that you see here, they become little white flecks all over the knit fabric. It's so cute, and these are just perfect match. Um, yes, really, really pretty. Uh, so it's an 80% superwash blue face luster which is perfect for socks, 20% nylon. It's also a high twist. So, you know, blue face luster is very dur durable. Nylon is very durable and a higher twist makes it even more durable. So these will be perfect for socks. And I already had a sock set of hers in my stash, only the other colorway, which is the fawn colorway. So pretty. And I actually bought this one to knit a shawl, to knit the um, Aura shawl by Caitlin Hunter. I never got around to actually casting it on. Um, because I wasn't sure about the colors that I would be using. Um, so now I don't know if I should combine these. But as I said, they would be perfect for socks. And... The socks that Caroline has knit from this are just so, so cute. I just, she just um, does a contrasting heel with the one color and a contrasting um, toe with the other color. It's so cute. Um, and I would really like to knit some more socks um, because I have no socks on the needles, believe it or not. Well, apart from... Christmas sock whip from two years ago. Um, yeah, so I might be tempted to cast this on very soon. We'll see. And now I'll show you some of the other stitch markers that I got from uh, Crafts by Cloud. So here is her business card. Her name is Claudia. Uh, so her nickname is Cloud, and yes, yeah, so she makes really cute charms. And I mentioned to her that I wanted to make stitch markers out of it, and she's not really into the um, knitting uh, community. She's um, she mainly sells on in craft fairs um just uh, she sells keychains and uh, necklaces and um so she was really su surprised she was like what's a stitch marker what's a progress keeper what is this is this a market that i don't know if i'm like yes yes you should check it out and i got such lovely things so i already made these into stitch markers um she was very uh claudia was very kind to send me some uh rings and lobster clasps but was really really much appreciated and just just look at these i got two slices of cheesecake i'll just show you one at a time so pretty Yeah, it looks really, really nice. And she also has some uh, traditional Dutch candies. So these are, um, they're kind of like marshmallows. Um, I mean, in taste, but they, they look different. I haven't seen them in other countries. So uh, they're called speckies. Um, and so I got I got three of these but one is acting as a stitch marker on my sweater whip and I also got excuse me lots of noise outside and I also got a little bottle with teeny tiny not sure if you can see this but I, it's a bottle with teeny tiny speckies 
and they're so cute. They're like half a centimeter. <laughs> they're so cute, so cute. And I also got, and this is also a traditionally Dutch, a lick cookie. So a lick cookie. Because well, I don't know what's the history behind this, but um, um, so there's this glazing on top, and you can just lick it. Yeah, <laughs> I I usually would just eat it, but anyway, lick cookies, uh, and even it even looks like a cookie on the back. It's really really cute. Uh, so much attention for detail. Um, yeah. And she put in some little extras, a phone strap, a little birdie, and a cute little card. Ah, so it's really, really cute. And the packaging, oh, so cute. So I'm gonna put my hand on my address here. But look at this. That's so cute. Look. And uh, she had for um. In the first package, she uh, forgot to put one charm in there, so she sent that in, uh, in the next envelope. And that was like this. It was so cute. And I love the stamp too. I'm probably gonna cut that out and save it somewhere. I love cute stamps. Um, yeah, so in this one was the cupcake marker that I showed you on the sweater and my kitty is lounging on the sweater right now, so I won't disturb her again. Yes, but if you're if you're Dutch and you're looking for some cute stitch markers, be sure to check out Crafts by Cloud. She's also on Instagram, which is not yet on her um, business card. It's Crafts underscore by underscore cloud um, and you can find around there as well okay so exciting news the new crochet along that will start October 1st is the Shiv Rainbow crochet along and I'll just move to the side here so I can put in a picture right here because I can do that now with my fancy new podcast editor um, so this Shiv Rainbow blanket which is a crochet chevron blanket with a rainbow effect so chev rainbow as if i needed to explain that um yeah it was really really fun to make i was almost sad well i was sad when i finished it because it was such a nice whip and i am going to make a new one and i hope some of you will join in and make one too in the crochet along, which will start October 1st. Uh, so the Chef Rainbow Cal, hashtag Chef Rainbow Cal, with a C. And uh, I will have it run for four months, so until February 1st, I think. Um, yeah, I, it took me two months. It took my mom a little bit less than that, but um, I'm gonna take two months and then double that. So four months should be enough for most people because, you know, I, I know it's a busy, um, busy season, uh, holiday season is coming up. So, um, yeah, I would like people to have enough time and not stress because nobody wants extra stress in the holiday months. So yes, I'm going to have it run for four months. Um, yeah, and I'm really excited, so excited. So, um, as I said, I'm going to be making one with the uh, Scapia Studio Pack XL. No, not Studio Pack. Um, the Color Pack. The Scapia's Stone Washed and River Washed Color Pack. I will list all of the things in the description box. I will list my blog post uh, where you can find the free pattern, because if you didn't know, it's free. Um, and you can find all of the yarn you need. I have put affiliate links in there. So if you shop via the links that I put in the pattern, then I will get a small commission from the shop. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Just the shop pays a little bit extra to me. Um, and I will list all of the color orders in there, the sequence in which I use them, which I think is really um, helpful. 
uh, well, necessary actually to get that gradient. And I will be making a new one with the XL version. Um, so the starting chain number will be different, uh, but I will figure that out before the cowl starts. Um, yes. Um, and what I did last time, uh, so last time I started with one of the mini balls and I didn't take into account that uh, I, for the first row, I would have to do a starting chain. So I did that and then I just crocheted to see how many chevrons I would be able to do. Uh, but then of course, for the, uh, because I was trying to use up as much of that ball as possible. Um, so, um, for the next one, the next tiny ball that I used, I had a lot left over because I didn't have to crochet that starting chain anymore. So I'm gonna see if I will start with the main color first now. So I might be able to use up a little bit more of that tiny ball. But I don't want to cut it too close because some people might crochet, well, they will co crochet differently uh, from what I do. They might crochet um, looser or tighter and they might need some more yarn. Uh, I'm a very loose crocheter, but... So I think actually that uses more yarn. So usually I'm safe. If I can do it with the yarn amount, then... Someone who crochets tighter than me will definitely make it. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm really excited about that and um, I, I'm not quite sure how I, will, um, how I will publish the pattern for the XL version. I might just modify the existing pattern just to have those um, um, that starting chain number in there as well because the rest of the pattern is pretty much the same and I will be using the same color sequence so I think I will be doing that so just find the link in the description box and if I have made the Excel version then the starting chain number will be in there as well all right that's all uh, for me for this episode Thank you so much for watching, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're interested in some more tutorial videos or some more sneak peeks of my designs, be sure to check out my Patreon page, I will also link it down below. Um, it will mean the world to me if you would just check it out and see if it's something for you, or maybe give it a share on Facebook or Instagram. Um, yeah, it would just mean a lot to me. That's all from me. I hope you will have a crafty couple of weeks and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.